The first generation Nissan Kicks was on the small side and it had, well, not only a lack of space on the inside, but it also had a lack of power, it had a lack of features, and it just wasn't really fit for our market here in the United States. But now with this new redesign, it is ticking all the boxes that the last generation failed to do. So let's get into the review of the incredible improved Nissan Kicks. <laughs> If you compare the design, the exterior design from this generation to the last generation, there's no comparison. It doesn't look like the same vehicle whatsoever. This is the top of the line SR grade. There are three trims and stay to the end because I will give you guys a little buying guide on uh, Nissan's lineup here and which, which model is probably the best for you. I mean, you can hear the, uh, I think that's an Osprey up there uh, crying down on us or a Hawk of some sort, but the, the front end here is gorgeous. It's so much better looking than its competition, in my opinion. It looks very upscale. We have front parking sensors at the bottom. Uh, we have triple beam, beam LED headlights, and then you have the daytime running lights cascading below. It's a gorgeous look. You have the SR badge, and the hood looks very macho and masculine as well. Something that the old model with the V-Motion grille just looked out dated as we come down to the wheels these are 19s look at these fat triple spoke 19 inch wheels now when i test drove this for a quick drive in nashville a few weeks back i had optional wheels but i like these more i think they have a lot of character and it gives it some unique unique kicks for it to ride on if you get what i'm saying there unique shoes and check out the ground clearance we have uh, a segment leading ground clearance here at least standard i want to say it's like eight and a half inches somewhere around there and now that you can get all-wheel drive on it, um, this thing could definitely handle some light trails. Coming to the back, we get some Nissan Aria-like styling. Not a full light bar, but it does look very, very premium um, and upscale. I mean, looking at the back, it doesn't look like a $30,000 vehicle. It looks a little bit nicer. Kicks badge on the back, SR. And this one does not have all-wheel drive. You'd see an all-wheel drive badge here on the back if it did and since it doesn't have all-wheel drive it does have a good good amount of cargo space i believe the cargo space goes down maybe just a little bit there we go lifting this up but lots of cargo space here nice kicks mat getting underneath um i think there is well there's a fix a flat with these 19s but you can see that you would have space for um a spare tire an optional spare tire if you want to outfit it like that and this floor you can see the floor can move down a little bit it looks like as well of course you can fold down the rear seats for a little bit more cargo capacity like any other lift back and crossover and i'm six foot one you can see this lift lift gate lifts up really really high um there's many vans that don't lift this high and i'm bumping my head into so nice height clearance here underneath this relatively heavy steel hood we have a new powertrain two liter naturally aspirated 141 horsepower and 140 pound feet of torque made it of course to nissan cvt however they have updated the cvt it's going to be a little bit more robust and i actually like how it drives wait for the driving impressions here in a little bit so i can talk more about it but now you can finally get all-wheel drive on the nissan kicks with this new generation i'll go ahead and post what the epa fuel economy is here but with mostly city driving that I've been doing, taking my kids to school, doing uh, city errands, I'm seeing about 34 miles per gallon, which is, well, again, a front wheel drive model, but I'm very, very impressed with the fuel economy here compared to much of its competition, as well as the performance. Again, I'll see you in the driving impression so we can talk more about this powertrain. And you might see this Kicks logo here inside the engine bay. I'm finding lots of Easter eggs in this vehicle. I'm sure there are a ton that I haven't found yet, but. So they lower the hood right here on the side mirror inside the dash right here obviously on the floor mat that's not really an easter egg but there's one kind of hidden inside here i don't know if the camera's going to pick it up you have some cool easter eggs around the car reminds me a little bit of toyota's corolla cross doing the same sort of easter egg treatment now this has been my daily driver this week to get the kids to school it's been quite nice you can see there's plenty of leg room there's a couple usb c's back there so for longer drives they could uh, recharge their kindles ipads that sort of thing pretty basic materials here but a nice uh soft pad here for their elbows but yeah nice flat bench seat essentially that goes across real nice and if you didn't have a kid in the middle you have some cup holders that fold down uh soft back to the seats as well as some mat pockets there uh, for your belongings some nice materials here on the front door i like the stitching now i have noticed even though you really dig your finger in here it does get a little bit soft but in practical use as you put your elbow in there it doesn't give quite enough it gets a little bit hard so that's one ding on the comfort um, even though this is like the fully loaded sr model we have uh, manual seats which i don't mind 
um, but some people who, who want power seats, you're gonna miss out. Now, I like how this is a, a like a, a combined uh, texture here in materials because cloth keeps these seats really, really cool um, in the hot Florida sun where I live. And the top parts, it's not that much of an issue because I'm not like, that's not the pressure points of my body sitting in these uh, combined uh, synthetic leather mixed with cloth. Bose headrest here um that have you know the speakers inside the headrest with a nice stitching i really really enjoy the sound system it's really well rounded and gets pretty dang loud all right closing the door sounds pretty decent i guess for the class the sr comes with two 12 inch screens this is crazy you can see i have well wireless android auto playing on this 12 inch screen um and then over here we have a, another customizable screen as well now i've been idling it this morning it said it's down to 33. honestly how I've been driving it, it probably can get better than 33 miles per gallon or 34 miles per gallon in town because in car line, I'm just, I'm just idling this thing probably for an extra hour or two this week. Um, so about an hour of this driving has been idling, which kills your fuel economy. So, I mean, at least 33 miles per gallon in town. And I like having my fuel economy here, but also has uh, the safety features in here, the Nissan safety shield, I forget exactly what it's called, but the lane, lane keeping assist in here, the radar cruise control, it is quite nice overall. Um, but again, I've been driving mostly in town. A little bit of a flat bottom steering wheel, nothing crazy. Nice baseball stitching on it, leather wrapped, it's fantastic. I even have auto uh, windshield wipers, which is typically a luxury feature. Uh, the volume knob is right off the shifter, which is awesome. I love the traditional shifter. I haven't played with the driving modes at all. I think standard is perfectly fine for, for daily driving. Auto brake hold is fantastic in here. We kind of have this touch, pa uh, touch capacitive panel for climate control, but I do have like these little tactile uh, little buttons. There's a little like, I don't know, a little raised circle here. Um, that I can feel where the fan control is. So I like it. It's not perfect. Would I prefer like actual physical buttons? Yes, but it hasn't really affected my um, my driving performance or I haven't been frustrated by it. We do have a wireless charger down here, a couple of USB-Cs, the start stop engine button is right there. We don't have an auto dimming rear view mirror. We do have blind spot monitor, uh, but I don't think we have dimming side mirrors so it doesn't look like it anyways um like i said the shifter is nice orange uh surround on it um and the cup holders look how deep they are i really like how secure my drinks feel in here this is a really small storage space but you have a 12 volt um in there for additional power now back to the materials really really nice here on the dash nice stitching um definitely better than most in its class. There's some ambient lighting here. I haven't messed with it. There's probably a way for you to customize it, but I'm okay with it just being white. Um, steering assist, um, which you can defeat, of course, by pressing this button. Heated steering wheel gets super hot. You also have heated seats in here. But back to the materials, um, look at this shelf. So when I'm playing with the touch screen here, it's just super easy to rest my hand on here. Um, and, and get around with the touchscreen. I don't think I've had, been in a car that's quite as nice. And it's a nice soft like vinyl touch point here. It's really, really awesome for my hand to uh, slide around and play with uh, the touchscreen here. So um, oh, also panel roof, I didn't mention that. The kids have loved that going to school, seeing the condensation. They do like raindrop races as it goes back on the sunroof. So that's a cool feature as well. But uh, I think I've covered everything I wanted to here on the interior and exterior of the Nissan Kick. So let's go ahead and start driving it. Oh yeah, put it into reverse real quick. I mentioned the parking sensors in the front. We also have parking sensors in the back, which is really nice for this class. And we do have predictive lines, top-down camera, which is hard to find in this class as well. So I really appreciate the technology here. Uh, get into the gas. Well, okay, we'll talk more about it once we get on to like not a neighborhood street, but I like it for city driving. There's enough pep for city driving. I still don't think it quite has the power I would like if I was doing a lot of highway driving, but it has no problem keeping up with uh, city traffic. I've never once had to floor the throttle this week. Ride quality in here is surprisingly good. I have 19 inch wheels, that's not helping. Um, that should detract from the ride quality. Despite that, I still have really nice ride quality, soft ride overall. I do have a a decent amount of road noise coming up those things can be improved on the models that have smaller wheels so the sl and the sv for example 
think I think they have 17 inch wheels if I remember right I'll fact check myself here in a little bit as we do a buying guide but um, the ride quality is absolutely fine in here and the handling surprisingly is really good in here I like how it handles better than a Corolla Cross maybe maybe equal to the HRV or slight, I haven't driven an HRV for a while but it's definitely had better driving dynamics than like a Corolla Cross um, so it, it feels really light on its feet per se um, and it's really flickable despite it being a bigger um, car than the outgoing Nissan Kicks all right so here's an opportunity to get into the gas It kind of simulates gears. It's a bit funny feeling. And there's been a couple times I've experienced that rubber band effect, but most of the time I don't I don't really feel it. It's not a fast car. I don't expect it to be. If you want a car with some speed in this class, you're going to have to look at like a Mazda CX-30, which is much smaller than this, or Toyota's Corolla Cross Hybrid, which um, it's probably going to be more expensive than this uh, when it's all said and done. I feel like I have so much more headroom than most of its competition as well. I feel like I'm in a decently sized vehicle here and the kids, like I said, have had so much space in the back seat compared to uh, Corolla Crosses that I've driven in the past. It just feels much better equipped to handle the needs of an American family. Uh, compared to most of its competition. Let's start comparing it to two of its biggest competitors, I would say would be the Corolla Cross. Let's not, let's take the hybrid out of, out of this picture because if you want the hybrid, just get the hybrid if you can find one. But if you don't want an electrified subcompact crossover, let's just compare it to the CVT Corolla Cross and the CVT um, Honda HRV. All right, I like this in terms of styling better than both of those by a mile. I think this is the best looking subcompact crossover on the market that's not a luxury vehicle. I think it looks better than Mazda CX-30. Uh, doesn't have all that fake plastic on it. I think it looks better or close, you know, I like the Subaru Crosstrek how it looks. This might be a bit, bit, bit equal, but I think, I think I'm leaning more towards the design of this uh, over most of the competition. So it beats the Corolla Cross, it beats the Crosstrek, it beats the HRV. Um, in terms of technology, it beats pretty much all the competition. It's right up there with uh, the Hyundai Kona, for example. Um, I like how this drives better than the Kona Turbo. Um, it's much more responsive. The Turbo is faster, but the Turbo just, it's the, the programming on the, um, the transmission and the ECU is trash. So get the CVT Kona and you can still get a lot of this technology. But I think this looks way better than the Kona. The Kona just looks super, super confused to me. Um, and I have like, I have the volume knob here. I have, you know, the climate control physical, even though it's touch capacitive, still great. Like this is, this if, if Nissan had this with a hybrid as well, it would be no doubt my pick of the litter. Um, but, since it doesn't have a hybrid, I still think the Corolla Cross Hybrid is probably best in class, but the interior is trash in, in compared to this. The electronics are not as good, and the interior space is really compromised, and it's kind of ugly. So you're really just buying that for the hybrid powertrain and have to compromise on everything else. Here, well, there's not a lot of compromise because I'm still getting really good fuel economy in the mid-30s. Um, I, the one thing I'm compromised here is maybe uh, engine, engine acceleration, but with good fuel economy and everything else in this vehicle making me happy, um, it's definitely an easy vehicle to recommend, which I'm kind of surprised that I'm saying that because, well, it's just that the competition isn't seemingly trying very hard. And I think Nissan, even though this vehicle is late to the party, it's supposed to be out about a year earlier than what it is due to well, lots of different delays, but it is, um, you know, I think it was well worth the wait for this new Nissan Kicks. Two other things about the performance here. Um, the brakes are fantastic, really, really communicative, nice progression, love the brakes in here. Also, like I've shown you guys full uh, pedal throttle acceleration and it's, it's okay, but if you're anything below, 
full like 100% pedal to the metal. It's really, really nice. It's really smooth. Um, and it still feels as fast. Here's the irony. It feels as fast as it is when it's trying 100% when you're pushing it at like 80% or even 70%. It feels about the same speed. So just don't floor this vehicle. It makes a lot of noise. It doesn't go any faster seemingly than if you're at like three quarter throttle. And it's really, really pleasant when you're, when you're not pushing this thing pedal to the metal. It really, really shines. Um, and my turning lanes are, well, they're a bit packed at this point. So um, it really feels like a Sentra that's been enlarged and lifted and it handles like a Sentra. The touch points in here are nice like a Sentra. The technology is better than a Sentra. The technology is more on, on uh, par with like an Altima, for example. So maybe it's better like more like an Altima crossover um, instead. So it's I'm very, very impressed with the kicks. But um, let's go ahead and head into the office and do a quick little buying guide. I'm not going to be able to keep up with the M4 there. I'm sorry, but that's the silly thing about having such a fast car is like he's already on his brakes and he's turning over there anyways. So it's just people are going to be silly. Um, <laughs> but uh, I hope that car makes him happy. It's making me happy just looking at it. So anyways, thank you guys. Let's go into the office and uh, do a little buying guide on the Nissan Kicks. All right, over at the Nissan Builder on the Kicks for 25, let's go and click the build and price. Now what's crazy is the Kicks starts at $21,000. That's an incredible buy. I mean, don't you don't most people don't need all wheel drive, but it's great that you finally have it on the kicks. It's great. It's more competitive, right? But like, is it worth an extra fifteen hundred bucks? Maybe it depends on where you live, right? So, but twenty one grand. It comes with uh, radar cruise control. It comes with auto, emergency. Auto. Let's let's go ahead and view more details here. Rear automatic braking uh, has seven inch drive assist display. When you upgrade to the SV, you get Apple CarPlay and uh, wireless Android Auto, both of them wireless. You get a wireless charger approach and unlock. So it's got smart key access at that point. And you get the Nissan 12.3 inch display with multi-touch control. However, if you want the really fancy lights that obviously are super premium for this class, you're gonna have to upgrade to the SR. And if you want the large digital screen behind the steering wheel, you're gonna have to upgrade to the SR as well as to get that 360 camera. Also, if Sirius XM is important to you, you have to go for the SV grade. And if you want USBs in the back, you're going to have to spring for the SR grade. Luckily, blind spot warning is standard. That is a huge pro for the base grade. Only way you can get the leather steering wheel is on that SR grade as well. And for 1500 bucks to get all wheel drive, it does upgrade the rear suspension to multi-link. However, I found that the torsion beam never gave me any issues and I thought the ride quality was quite good. So don't think that you need to upgrade to the multi-link with the all wheel drive just to get better ride quality. Yes, it'll be better. Yes, the handling could be a little bit better, but honestly, I was impressed with everything about the torsion beam on my front wheel drive model. I'm looking at kicks in my area. I wanna see if we're, we can find any good deals right now. Oh my gosh, the base kicks can be found well under MSRP, about three grand under MSRP. So yeah, I mean, that's about right because after destination, that gets it to 23,220. So yeah, this is about the right MSRP here and you can get it for around 21K. Other Nissan kicks here seeing about a $2,000 price drop. So wow, the Kicks S base model, really good deal. It's, you still get the good looking uh, daytime running lights as well. It, it looks quite good. Even the base wheels don't look terrible. I know they're just wheel covers on steelies, but we're seeing some good price drops and this is gonna be a hard vehicle to beat in my opinion for the entry level. But if you wanted some of the features like the um, that we saw on the SR, for example, there's much more SRs in my area as well as SVs, SVs being the most popular. We're still seeing price drops on it, um, which is great. Three grand off here on an SR with all the features that you get. Man, it's it's a good buy still. Let's take a look at some of the SVs. They're down to about $22,000, $23,000, $3,000 price drops. So 
depending on what you need out of this. And I even like the wheel design here on the SV2. That's pretty cool. So yeah, a good buy all around on each trim level. You should be able to get well below MSRP on any sort of the grades. And that sums up our uh, review of the Nissan Kicks 2025 redesign. Good buy, every single trim level, good deals to be had. And it's uh, just a really well-rounded subcompact crossover with really good looks and good functionality and good tech.